CJ, this is such a different role for you. It's very serious, but I'm sure it has uh, your punch of humor that you're known for at some points. <laughs> Hopefully not during the trial. No, but I'm... <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, um, Jamie, there's, uh, there are no funny moments for, for my character in, in this, uh, in this film. There really are, aren't, it's really, uh, you know, for audiences, I'm hoping you guys, uh, hang on, uh, for the ride with me and that you let me, uh, explore a little bit of a avenue that you've never seen me do. Uh, mo I guess I should say most of the, um, screen public has, has never seen me do. I'm a, a actor trained in the theater and uh, I'm from Minneapolis and I did a ton of dramatic work. Um, yeah, I did a, a lot of dramatic work in Minneapolis and you know, lots of Shakespeare, lots of uh, straight plays. And I found my love of uh, musical theater and sketch and improv uh afterwards because i really wanted to be a you know a more well-rounded actor and so but i started in in drama and um you know hollywood is uh is is a, a different kind of beast when you have a door open uh you better walk through that door and that comedy door opened for me and so i walked through and, and went in uh you know full force but uh, I always had that dramatic card still uh, in the back of my, uh, in the back of the jeans there. So uh, Clint Eastwood, in his wisdom, said, "You know what? Let's bring that that uh, dramatic card out and let's see if you can, if you can hang with the big boys here." So um, I mean, how did this so project find you? This is since it is such a different role for you to take on. Juror number two is not the Cedric we know. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not, and you know. Um, fought for it like uh we do in Hollywood we you know as an actor uh not everything is given to you so I auditioned just like everyone else and we and I you know I fought for it I'm down for the fight and so um I've been told and I talked to Clint a little bit about it and he he uh he saw my tape he went through all of the tapes and he said that's my guy right there I I, I really enjoyed what what you brought to the audition and so there we go was there a description or a breakdown you received for this particular character definitely definitely um the character um marcus king is the is the role okay. and he is a uh boys and girls uh he he heads the boys and local boys and girls club and uh he's had some um trauma when it comes to gang violence his brother was killed in a gang uh affiliated accident and we see him being selected for this jury and with that um you know the the film talks about and 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 uh explores our individual prejudices that we will bring to a jury um certain judgments, certain things that we think about, uh, certain things that have affected us. And Marcus has definitely been affected by the killing of his brother, who was uh, killed uh, in a gang accident. And the accused is gang affiliated. And Marcus sees that. And he sees that as an issue, sees that as a problem, sees that as uh, this guy is no good well that makes him perfect for the defense then right <laughs> it makes him perfect well not for the defense but, i mean but for, for the prosecution you're right yeah excuse me um and uh you you see that with uh uh some of the other jurors uh this this film borrows a little bit of uh of that classic 12 angry men where a lot of those guys had their individual biases and um were affected by their judgment and uh you definitely see that with with my character the cast is just exceptional with yourself included were you looking forward to sharing scenes with someone or someone's in particular and maybe going tete-a-tete -tete with nicholas holt 
I was uh, definitely interested in going head to head with Nick. Uh, this guy's a star. I really like. I really like working with Nick. He's a solid actor, prepared, professional, but also uh, a great guy just to work with. I, I, I like how people move around, not just on camera, but how they treat others, how they work with people on set uh uh that that part of nick i i really really respect and really like and one of my first days there working with him he and i had to really go at it and i barely know nick you know uh not at all but we come from the same cloth of uh let's be professional let's let's do the best that we can plus uh we lovingly call uh clint the boss so let's let's do this for the boss. Let's 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 uh, let's kill it. And so we were in like a in Savannah, Georgia, in June or July of last year, and uh, 107 degree heat. It was really hot, and it's like my first or second day. And Nick and I got to go at it on this uh, at this bridge. And um, if uh, you do see the film, you'll you'll see that scene where we where we. Uh, we take it to each other, and um, and I think it turned out really well. As actors, were you sequestered kind of there yourselves as well to sort of, you know, keep the film under wraps, but also, you know, be in the moment of these people who have to spend so many hours of their day together deciding someone's fate? Yeah, well, sequestered, no. Uh, you know, <laughs> no, you got to go around town. I got, you... to, get, I got to get out and, <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, see a little of that Savannah, uh, Georgia nightlife. And we got to hang out a little bit. And um, so uh, no, no sequestering. But, uh, you know, I, I remember, you know, working on that particular scene, maybe two or three takes in. And, you know, Clint moseys up to me and... Uh, I'm like, uh oh, what is he gonna say? And he, you know, in his Clint Eastwood way, you know, he 93 years old, but still steely and got that. You're still that pretty afraid of him. <laughs> and looking at him and he, was like, and he goes, You're you're fucking killing it. Oh my and, he, and I just like, come on, man. That's so cool. <laughs> That's such an amazing, cool compliment that you know, you just that's not in the oh, card. Life made. Card room. I'm, I'm a weirdo from Reno 911. You know, <laughs> my pants are down all the time on that. <laughs> now I got an Eastwood uh, giving me a compliment, and it was, it was just a really great experience. The, and the did whole... you expect a sexual advance after working on Reno 911? You expected him to come over and make a Jim Dangle? Uh, uh, I thought, you know, rub your arm or something. <laughs> I, you know, I thought he was going to just grab me and go, you know. What you you don't belong here. No, no, get <laughs> out of here. Why don't why we, <laughs> we'll, we're gonna get Malcolm Jamal Warner in here in a minute and and, and uh, you know let him finish it up. But no, it was it was an it was an amazing experience and it was really cool to talk to just talk to Clint, really get to know him. And um, you know, he I know he's a big music lover, and during the pandemic, I got to um study a little bit of music myself I, I i've been playing a little bit of piano and i know he's a composer and a great musician and so we we spoke about our love of music and he talked a little bit about uh just the history of hollywood of how he was a, he was good friends with sammy davis jr and that sammy davis jr got a gun from gary um uh uh, God, now I'm, I'm I'm spacing on uh, Gary Cooper. Oh, wow! Cowboy, cowboy, a uh, movie guy. He got a gun from Gary Cooper, and then Sammy Davis passed down that gun to Clint Eastwood. You know, uh, it's just such a cool story of of history of Hollywood history of how things can be passed down and. And you only get those stories when you get to, you know, when you get to work with icons like that. Well, you talked about him as a person. How is he uh, as a director? Oh, yeah. Uh, Clint is 
really cool in that he does a lot of the work in the casting process because he believes that you know the character more than he does. Wow. Which is probably very true because, you know, as actors, you, you're studying and trying to figure out motivations and I'm going to boys and girls clubs and talking to to uh, managers there. You know, that's not what Clint is doing. He's he's doing locations and figuring out the, the grand scheme of things, but he trusts the actors that you know what you're doing. And so a lot of it is hands off and and um, and and uh, letting you figure it out yourself. You know, um, he does tweak here and there and and hit angles and ask you uh, amazing questions for you to to use. But I felt a lot of it was like, uh, you know, you know, your character more than I do do the work. And that's such a blessing for, for an actor to be trusted, you know, and to say, let, let's let this guy fly. I, I, I already, I cast you to do this job. So uh, it was, it was really cool in that regard to just to, to figure it out. You know, a lot of scenes with Nick and with JK and uh, the lovely Leslie Bibb um Tony Collette such an amazing cast um we got to work and figure it out ourselves and that was great Mr. Chris Messina I don't want to forget him he does such a great uh great performance he's he's been a solid actor for a long long time and he does a great job in this um Zoe Deutsch I, like you. Zoe <laughs> Deutsch. I don't want to I want to shout out to Zoe Deutsch she does such a great job in the, in this film as well it's such an amazing cast Chris is a little like you. He cut his teeth on screen and comedy, and then he just moved to drama and just killed it there, too. <laughs> so yeah. he, he's just like you. He's quite versatile with the wonderful work he does on our screen. Uh, well, I'll, here's a secret a lot of people know already. You know, you do comedy, then you 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 can do a lot of this stuff. It takes something for you to be funny. Drama is every day. You're doing drama all the time, uh, every time. But it takes something to to make someone laugh, to really uh, make someone go, you know what, I, I identify with that. That makes me laugh a lot. Uh, and so to me, that's the harder job um, to make someone really guffaw, really, really enjoy themselves that way. And so drama is hard too. I'm not taking anything from drama, but hey, let's be real. Comedy's harder. You touched on one scene in particular that really has stood out for you. Is there a memorable moment or maybe one that you're most proud of the work you put into? Uh, maybe it's the one that you mentioned with Nick. Um, I'm proud to be in the canon of Clint Eastwood films. Um, and I think when you see it, I think people will be very happy with it. He's had such an amazing career. And this is another amazing feather in the cap of, of Eastwood films. And that's what I'm most proud of. It's an intense, and very serious movie. How did you all shake off a long day of being on set? Um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes you do take some of the, that stuff with you. And sometimes you have your own personal issues going on. You know, I'm not just an actor. I'm a human being. I have a family. I have friends, I have life going on. So a lot of that stuff is having to set that stuff aside, do the job, and then now you got to go back to that. So um, and sometimes you can even use a little bit of, of what's going on in your real life for a project. Uh, that, that's what I chose to do. I, I had some stuff going on in my personal life, and I decided let's 
use some of that for this particular film. Um, I found some similarities going on with with Marcus and myself. And uh, instead of wallowing, instead of being afraid, instead of being, you know, anxious, let's use some of that and and put it into the role um, because Marcus is also going through some things. Um, so sometimes you can't just shake things off, you know? That's what therapy and, <laughs> and drinks are for sometimes, you know? But uh, it's so cool to be able to work on a project with amazing folks on camera and off camera. It's so great to be able to work on one given project and to have Clint Eastwood be the helm of that. You know, he's worked with so many great individuals that, you know, his crew have been working with Clint for all, you know, for years. They understand Clint before Clint knows, you know. So they work in a kind of secondhand language. And to be a part of one given project and trying to make this this vision for this 93-year-old director. I challenge any 90-year-old <laughs> <laughs> to be working and to come up with this product. I don't think we've seen anyone do this. Uh, I'm I'm excited for people to see this project. I hope people do. Is there a message or a, a motion you hope lingers with people that watched your number two? Is it right versus wrong? Is it speak up when you're, I mean, <laughs> there, there's so many messages people could take away from this. I mean, sh sure, um, Nicholas Holt has to decide family over morals, things like that. But is there an emotion or something you really hope, maybe a gray area between those two? that you think well, is going to linger with people. Well, what I hope is that people have a conversation and, and I think people will talk about, about this project after, um, you know, after they see it. Uh, this, this film isn't a superhero film. It's not a supernatural film. It's adults dealing with adult issues. And that's what I like about this film the most. This harkens back to those 90s films that, you, that made you think that, made not you know it wasn't someone swooping in and saving the day it was uh people dealing with real issues so i hope people walk away thinking about uh, about morality thinking about what you would do in this situation thinking about you know how you would handle it um uh and also saying whoo those were some pretty dope performances right there. That that was a that was a nice fall thriller film, and I miss those, you know. And Clint Clint brought it for us. Tony uh, Colette and Nicholas Holt, which is kind of cool to see that Ether, those guys Jay are this is Ether, yeah. But Tony and 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 Nicholas in how they worked with each other so long ago in About a Boy. Um, you know, playing mother and, and son. And now they're kind of... Full circle. <laughs> it's really, really cool. So now that you've rewarmed your dramatic muscle, will we be seeing you uh, in Broadway or more dramatic roles these days? Well, that's the that's the goal. Or that's the, uh, you know, so, like I said before, Hollywood sees you in a certain way. And you got to go in the door, but hopefully, you know, folks will will say, okay, you know what? Let's give the old Cedric a chance uh, to hoof it up on Broadway. Let's see if this guy can sing. Let's see if this guy can do a little bit more dramatic work. And um, and those doors hopefully will open up. Uh, if I'm good enough for Clint, maybe I'm good enough to do something else with you I, i've gotten a real cool opportunity to do a lot of animation a lot of voiceover work and with voiceover work uh you don't i don't have to have this shell yes. you know i get just voice 
things and I get to explore a lot more different uh, types of, of characters. And so hopefully people will see on screen that I also can and do that as well. We loved you on Speechless. We loved you as you know, 901. We loved you on the Goldbergs. What's next for you? What have you been busy working on lately? Well, you know, as they say, you know, they you got to keep all that stuff under wraps. I got a couple of irons in the fire and and uh and then when it's time, I can uh come back and 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 talk about it. But, you know, I got a couple couple things going on and, you know, in the meantime, I vacuum the house, you know. I got <laughs> do some dishes and and uh you know go and get a salad every once in a while but yeah <laughs> reno 901 came back just as the pandemic was starting and then you guys did a wonderful small tubi production of it as well i'm sure people have reached out to you time and time again to thank you for bringing levity to them during those difficult moments and you've done this character at second hand to you for for so long what has it meant to you to keep being asked to come back and be this character again it's pretty amazing uh you know i would bet most actors would think you know you would never think this is something you'd be remembered for you you just don't have any plan for that kind of thing uh you know we did the show so long ago uh you know developed a character and came up with the name. I, I named my character after a restaurant <laughs> in Hollywood named Jones, you know, it, you know, and it's still standing up. It's still great. It's still such a cool bar, but you know, you just, I thought of that years ago and now we're still talking about these characters. They're cartoons. They're the Muppets, you know, they, they're indelible now, you know, they, they, they're iconic. They, hurt, they mess up. They're nude. They come back. They die. They're back. <laughs> you know? And so, um, to be able to do that is is, uh, is really great. I think a lot of us are now comedy Avengers at this point. We've learned so much doing the show, but also doing other projects, and then coming back. And now we have these huge, amazing, bulging, rippling comedy muscles. Uh, you know. <laughs> improv muscles that we can flex on each other when we see each other we set each other up we knock it down um and it's so also great to see that everyone you know from the cast has done su such great things after reno you know the, and you the, find your way into each other's projects so nicely too goldberg's and and so on you know you guys seamlessly seem to find one another you know, either by accident or unintentionally. No, yeah, it's pretty and great. We're going to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, and when I get the chance to work with Wendy, you know, on something else, you know, it's just the best to to be able to see my friend Wendy and how amazing she is, and and for everyone now to really just see how how amazing she is. I always knew it the first night. Wendy and I work together. There's a big scene that's on the internet all the time where she pulls over a drunken cowboy and <laughs> the cowboy does choreography. A lot of people yes. don't realize that's me, but that's <laughs> uh, that was what we you shot. Can dance. These are clips you should add to your reel. <laughs> Thank you for the advice. <laughs> but that was something we shot the first night we worked and to see that that thing is still shown you know so many times i get people sending me that particular clip you guys should have done this on reno i'm like that's me that's <laughs> absolutely me and that's from the reno that's from reno 911 um but uh you know the show is you know part of the fabric of of what American television is. Uh, and I hope we get to do it again. I was going to say, are you going to keep doing it until Patrick can't fit in the shorts anymore? I mean, until Thomas can't fit in the shorts anymore. <laughs> Thomas is always trim and fit. He doesn't let himself go. He's always <laughs> shorts ready. 
Uh, so I, I, I guess we'll probably be working that until he's not. <laughs> Uh, He's got so, the boots ready to go too, you know. Always ready to go and dust them off and pull them out. <laughs> it's it's pretty great because we we're still alive. We're still very funny. So I I'm hopeful that we'll be we'll be back in those brown beige suits again. Well, certainly, all of you have gone on to such incredible success. Nisi and Wendy and. Ben and all of these and wonderful Barry people. And Carlos and you know uh Tom, we we've all done really uh really fun projects and somehow we all fooled Hollywood that we know what we're doing. <laughs> I touched on Reno, but is there other projects that really hold a special significance in your heart? Speechless is is definitely a TV series that I'm probably most proud of uh, to be able to represent the disability community and work so closely with, uh, you know, some foundations and uh, to represent them in a light that has never been seen really before on television. Um, you know, I still get people wanting me to be their aid. <laughs> <laughs> uh is is pretty is pretty great that show uh had so much heart yet balanced let's be really really funny too let's make sure these jokes are are the cream of the crop and i i really credit scott silberry the creator head writer of that show um uh for for knowing the tone for getting what that series needed to be his brother uh, uh had uh cerebral palsy and he and his brother got in adventures all the time they dated wow. girls they got in fights they yelled at each other they did things that teenagers do and he wanted to show that kind of representation on tv disability doesn't mean that you're not also a jerk sometimes. You're, not, but you're also lovable. You're a human being, and he wanted yes. to show all those sides of it. And for a black man to be the voice of this character was really, um, was really something that had not been shown, and was something that I took with pride and was really happy that I I could be a part of. So that was. Um, you know, that was a, a project I was really proud of. What would you like to say then to everyone who are fans and supporters? Continue to support the wonderful work you do on our screens and now the big screen. Um, I would like to tell them you guys are wrong for supporting me. I don't know what the hell I'm <laughs> doing. How did I fool you into wanting to watch anything I do? The Boondocks, Bojack Horseman. Reno, uh, you know, the Forty Year Old Virgin. I mean, uh, meet the Fockers. You've been uh, doing this a long time, and you've been a part of. I've been it. doing this for a long, long time. I've been fooling people for a long time, but I, I appreciate um, the support, and you know, some some good things are are I think will be coming uh, ahead. But I'm really proud of this juror number two project that I think that you guys are going to really, really love. <laughs>